expense? Well, one of the most important reforms we have done after our painful tax reforms, one of the things we could invest in is precisely health care. Now we have about, oh, 85% of our population is now covered by health insurance. So that's a big investment we've done because we, we subsidize the premiums of the poorest of the poor. Now with regard to, um, to the medicines under price control, we don't want price control. It's not, generally, it's not good for business in a competitive situation. But we have thousands of products, pharmaceutical products in the country, and it's only five, five products commonly bought by, by the poor that we have put under price control because we see their margins at about, they're like about like about ten times the import price, and uh, and it will really go a long way to uh, to uh, help have our people um, afford uh, find affordable this uh, this very important medicines. But I do hope that uh, the industry can uh, can do its own price reductions without us having to do anything under price, con put anything under price control. It's an important issue, particularly yeah. given that it is the just five drugs that yes. so many people really are, are relying on. Yes. Are there any other policy changes you think need to be put in place to address the global economic slowdown, whether from a healthcare standpoint or from the banking sector standpoint uh, with uh, regard to giving companies more access to credit? We are fortunate that we made these very important reforms years ago. For instance, health care, education, training of our, of, of our manpower so they can, you know, they can be qualified for the, air, for the areas that uh, investors want to, to be in. We've been able to afford this because of our painful tax reforms years ago. Our banking system, uh, we have had very prudent, uh, we have had banking reforms to, that, uh, to make our system more prudent and it complements the innate conservatism of our own banks. So that when the Lehman Brothers uh, event happened, uh, because there are good disclosure rules and reserve requirements and uh, capital requirements, everybody knew just how much our banks were exposed, and that's less than 1%. And that less than 1% was fully, cover, fully covered by reserves and the banks were well capitalized, no run. So, uh, so these are the things that help us weather the crisis. Or the important thing is we must not be complacent. We must continue our reforms. We must spend. We must invest in human and physical infrastructure. Uh, we must continue to uh, to provide for a regulatory environment that will be that is prudent and conservative rather than permissive of, of financial adventurism. And we believe that uh, by doing all this, we can position ourselves very well to be very competitive once the world economy rebounds. All at a time that you continue to need to alleviate poverty yes. as the uh, population growth continues. The, it's the population growth rate has gone down to 1.95% from the 2.4% that it used to be. So, um, and, um, and um, well, if I may say something about population, now it sort of works both ways. Because if you look at the countries that are weathering the crisis relatively well, it's the countries with big populations that have good spending power. China, India, Indonesia, and, and, and the Philippines. Uh, countries that are very small, even if they were f their first world countries, and they don't have the domestic demand, like Singapore, are experiencing recession. So it really works both ways. The important thing is that uh, is that your population uh, should be cared for, that, that they can have the spending power. In the case of the Philippines, we've been promoting natural family planning and birth spacing, breastfeeding because it uh, contributes to natural family planning. And, uh, and that is what we have done to bring the growth rate of the population down from 2.4% to 1.95%. It's interesting because as a woman, perhaps you're coming to the table with different ideologies than perhaps a man would when you're saying breastfeeding and, and the yes, way you're, yes. you're caring for a family. Uh, this must have actually uh, helped your success along the way, coming from the issues that anybody would look at yeah. from a different way. D well, is that accurate? Uh, possibly, yes, yes. Um, also, you know, the, the, um, the emphasis on on uh, expenditures or investment in nurturing activities like health, education, training. 
Nisa, Nisa, the environment. It's so yes. impressive to look at you, and I was watching you in the G20 in London, yes. and you are, uh, you know, um, among the suits of, you know, all, all, all other world leaders. Um, what can you tell me about your success? What, to what would you attribute such tremendous success? I guess to hard work, hard work and focus. We really, uh, from the beginning, uh, I, uh, I knew what I inherited. I inherited a country on the brink of bankruptcy, even if the rest of the world was, even, even if the rest of Asia was surging. So we had to address the economy. It's the economy, the economy, the economy. And so, um, so we worked very hard to make fundamental reforms, even if they're not popular reforms. And, and this global economic crisis has just validated that we did the right thing years ago. You also, though, as far as your upbringing, had the family support. Yes. That, that certainly had to help in terms of your success well. As the well. family, you know, family values are very important exactly. in the Philippines. And that is why, like, for instance, we have four million Filipinos here in the United States. And they keep sending remittances back home. They, they, they never forget family back home. Even if the U.S. is in recession, remittances have been growing. It's a wonderful value that Filipinos have. And um, collectively, therefore, our children are, are our future. So we have to, to invest in them. We have to invest in education. And, uh, and again, they are our most important resource. They are the biggest source of attraction for investments in our country. You make a great point. Uh, President Arroyo, let me ask you uh, what's next for you. As yes. you uh, look toward next year, the end mm -hmm. of your term, um, you will be capping 10 years in office. How are you feeling about this? Well, uh, there's a lot of things that we still have to do. And we want, we, uh, we want, we need to invest, we have to, con we need to continue our investments in what I call the three E's, our priorities, education, economy, environment. And we still have uh, the global economic crisis upon us. So we still have to address that. While we have weathered it so far, we must not be complacent. So a lot of challenges still lie ahead. A lot of work still has to be done within, in the next, within the next year. So it sounds like you're not done yet. You still have a lot on your plate. Yes. But l let me ask you this. Would you like a constitutional amendment to a parliamentary uh, system where perhaps you can serve as prime minister? Well, uh, I've, I've always been saying that there are two Philippines. One is where the economy is working again and moving forward. The other one is where the political system is still broken. And so we've done many fundamental reforms in, in the economy, and it's time to begin to uh, do fundamental reforms in the political system. Now, where that will go, what, what the specific reforms will be, that would really be up to those who are in charge of uh, doing such amendments. I guess there was a vote recently, and a third of the people said that they mm -hmm. do not expect President mm -hmm. Arroyo to step down. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> well, that's, fortunately, it's only a third. No, that's, that's not true, and I've said it. O over and over again, my term ends in 2010, but until the last day, I'm going to continue to work hard for our economy, our environment, and our education. It, and sounds, our people. Like, it sounds like the people would like you to be there beyond 2010, which is very, I'm sure, a nice feeling for you. Well, the important thing is what we must do within this next year. Madam President, would you like to add anything else that I may have missed about the economy that is critical to the business community? I want to make sure that we get out the things that the business and investors want to hear about the Philippines. Well, I, I, I would just like to say, I, I suppose that in some, the Philippines is not standing still in spite of the global slowdown. And the fact that we are one of the, um, one of the few economies that so far have not gone into recession or have not contracted. And the fact that we just got an upgrade in our credit rating by Moody's in the, during the height of a global economic crisis means that the Philippines is a good place in which to do business. Madam President, good to have you on the program. Thank you. Thank you so much.